Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, I'm going to start adding some videos every now and then with just a Christmas craft because I have a lot of them that I need to get on here. And uh, so these will just be some extra videos. I'll still, uh, I still plan on doing a couple videos at least a week. Uh, with just thrift flips and things like that and maybe an ornament right at the end like I've been doing But I want to add some more in so this is just an add-in uh, a lot of these will be quicker Some of them will be uh, as long as my other videos um, But this one is going to be a sock snowman so uh, this is just a regular sock that I purchased at uh, the Dollar Tree. Any white sock will do. Um, and I have coffee stained that. So all I did was just take some coffee and dip my sock in and take it straight out and wring it out and then dry it. And that that's enough uh, for me. I want it to look more primitive. Uh, if you want yours to be snow white, like a snowman usually is, uh, then uh, feel free to just use a white sock. But I like mine a little grungy. Um, I guess this is one made out of melting snow when you get down to the mud. But I'm using Epsom salts to fill it up. And you can get these this size bag at the Dollar Tree. And uh, so I just use a cup to fill it up. I just put the sock down in there and stretch it over it. It just makes it a lot easier to put your uh, your salts. You know, you could use um, you could use fine gravel, um, or uh, I guess you could probably you could use rice. Uh, but I store anything that I have left over for the season. I store it in a tractor trailer, so um, I don't want rats chewing on mine, and the 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 rice will draw mice. So uh, I just use the Epsom salt. So I had to move to a bigger jar here because I couldn't get mine big enough. So I'd put a little in and then take it off and kind of shake it down and just keep adding till I get enough in my sock. And that's just completely up to you of what size you want your snowman to be. But once you get enough in it and you're happy with the size, then we can move on to the next step. Now these socks will shape just about any way that you want and I just happen to want mine tall and slender. So I'm just going to kind of work it around until I get the shape that I want. Um, now you could use, instead of using Epsom salts, you could use a fine uh, fish tank gravel. That would work really well. Or like I said, you could use rice. Uh, just if you store it, when you store it, just store it in an airtight container so that the mice can't get to it. Uh, but now I'm just kind of shaping a head here. So I'm shaping the body the way I want it and trying to decide how much I need to leave for the head. And um, in this case, I left my head a little bigger than I wanted. And so working it down, I just ended up dumping that out. Um, but you just tie it where you want the neck. Now, at this point, you could do a uh, snowman with three uh, parts. But I just happen to think that they look more primitive to me if, they, um, if they're if they just a two-tiered. Uh, and if you like just a short uh, chubby snowman, then obviously you can make it that way. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to try to make mine more taller and more slender. And so I just tie off the top. And like I said, I, I ended up taking a little bit away from this because I didn't want the head this this big. But uh, when you get the head the size you want it, then you just tie that off also. And then you're just going to cut any remaining uh, fabric away. And as you can see here, I'm kind of dumping some of that out. So, like I said, just tie that and then you'll cut your excess fabric away. And it's okay that you have a little bit of fabric there on top because we're going to be putting a hat on this snowman. So, it's, it's not going to show. 
So once I get that tied and get the excess cut away, then it's ready for the next step. Now you wouldn't have to, but I have a, kind of a chunky wood slice here that I'm gonna put mine on. Uh, like I said, you wouldn't have to at all. These will set up just fine without them because uh, that gravel will dis distribute or the, um, the Epsom salts will distribute how you want them to. Uh, but because I want mine to maintain a certain shape, then I felt like it would work better if I just glued it onto this base. And I'm just using some uh, strips of torn fabric here. And uh, for this, I would use a fabric that's printed on both sides. Uh, but I'm just tying some torn fabric around for its uh, scarf. And then I just hot glued the buttons on the front. So uh, now for my snowman hat, uh, Dollar Tree has those that you can buy already made or you can make your own. And I usually make my own because I like for them to look more primitive. And if you haven't guessed what I'm holding on top of that, it is uh, one side of a spool uh, that your ribbon comes on. So I just take one side off and then I take another sock from the Dollar Tree and just stretch it over the top and then just stuff the remaining, I just cut the toe off the sock and then wrap around it and stuff the remaining in the bottom. And I know this looks funny here, but uh, we're gonna put a, a rim around, or not a rim around the center, we're gonna put a um, strip of fabric around the center and that will hold it into the shape of, of the um, hat. So this is a very simple way to make a snowman hat. So there's no point in buying them when, if you're like me, I have these spools all the time. So now I'm just gluing a strip of fabric uh, around the, the hat. And then uh, I'll take my antique oxide ink and just kind of brush over that and, and make that grungy. Now, I could have taken that little strip of fabric and coffee stained it, but I didn't want to wait on it to dry, and I didn't have one already finished. So, um, so I just take my little uh, antique oxide and just brush over it. And I realized that not everyone likes the primitive look the way I do. Uh, so... Just put your whatever you want on yours, and at this point, you could actually put some greenery on the hat, and maybe some berries. But um, I didn't want that, I wanted to keep this one very primitive, so um, so I just um, glued that on the top and I stuffed that little bunch of fabric there right into the bottom, and it actually helps hold it in or helps hold it in place. And then I decided at this point that I wanted an extra button, so I just glued another little button on, on this. So this little snowman could be finished at this point, especially if you like the uh, primitive look because I've sold many snowmen without a face, uh, but I want a face on this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint, um, paint a face. But before I do that, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the body. And you could stop and not paint the body here, but I like the look of just kind of um, haphazardly painting some uh, off-white on it. I'm using better cream here. But it just changes up the whole look of this. I think it gives the, the sock a totally different texture. But the main reason that I like to paint these is because um, if after you get your painting on it done, and if you know you're gonna paint it, then wait on the buttons and wait on the hat. I just wanted to show you what, uh, how you could make it without having to go through all these steps. So I'm just kind of painting around what I've already done. But the thing that I like the most is uh, once you get this painted on and uh, it's gonna be wet, uh, then before you let that dry, then you just uh, make it more in the shape that you want. And then 
after you do that, in my case, because I want it thin, uh, or a skinny snowman, rather a taller, skinnier snowman, then I'm just going to lay it down. So, uh, once I shape it, um, almost like you're shaping um, a loaf of um, of candy or, or bread or whatever, um, then you just kind of work it around and and that sock will give and stretch and so you can kind of get any shape that you want and then when you lay it down uh, then this paint will dry to that shape and it will uh, hold its shape much better that way so like i said there's a couple reasons for my painting it um, but that's one definitely one of the big reasons that I like to paint it. But I don't like to be able to look at it and see that it's a sock. So this changes that up a lot and you don't notice that this was once a sock. And then once I get it all painted, then this is where I start really working to get the shape that I want. And as you can see, I'm squeezing it smaller and uh, and then I'll lay it down and kind of work it like I'm working a loaf and once I get it uh, the uh, shape that I want it then I'll just leave it alone and let it dry for a couple hours and and then it will be able to retain that shape and as you can see here you can really really stretch that sock out and and get it get more length to your snowman and then once I get it the shape that I wanted it then I just kind of paint it on a little bit more uh, paint and again that will just help it hold its shape even more and uh, then I'll let that dry for a couple hours before I do anything else with it and then once I let that dry then I just took a little piece of stick and broke, break, broke it off and then took a little knife and kind of sharpened the end of it. And that's going to be my snowman nose. So I'm just going to hot glue that right on to the front. But first I'm going to paint it um, a kind of a burnt orange color here. And obviously you could do a brighter orange. But because I want that primitive look, then mine needs to be burnt orange. So then I just glue it on to uh, the front of the face. And then I'll just take some black paint uh, and just paint a little dot for the eyes and then uh, just kind of four or five little dots for the mouth and keep this very primitive looking and simple. And I like to go when I'm, when I'm trying to get a primitive look, I usually just paint a small dot for the eyes. Uh, it just seems like it has more of a primitive look if it's uh, a smaller eye. And then I just very lightly put a little eyebrow on it. And then once I let that dry, then I just take a little, uh, I just took the little end of a stick and put a little um, twinkle in the eye just by dotting uh, just a little dot of white uh, over the top. And uh, that really makes a big difference in the face. And then, like I said, just put the little dots uh, for the mouth, uh, like the snowmen that were made, um, the mouth was made from little lumps of coal. So, again, you just kind of dot those, four or five of those, in the shape of the mouth. And to me, that's a very simple, but very primitive, uh, very primitive snowman face. Once I get the little shimmer in his eyes, then uh, I'll tie the scarf back around him and he'll be finished. Um, but because I have him on a base, I want to uh, add some snow because I felt like it, it just didn't look right to have him on something without snow. So um, if you've never tried to uh, make snow from... Um, from joint compound it works really well so uh, I just take some joint com compound 
and put it on the wood slice. Um, at this point, I've already glued him on. And then um, I just start putting the um, joint compound on the wood, kind of like you're icing a cake. So um, just straight joint compound. I just put it on there and uh, until I get um, the look that I want. And I'm just going to kind of make it look like he's on a mound of snow. And then once I get this uh, little wood piece um, covered well, then I'm going to take that same joint compound and add some snow to the top of his, uh, his hat. And then what I did before this dried is just sprinkle a little of the Epsom salts over the top of the snow just to kind of make it glisten a little bit. You could skip that part. It really isn't necessary. Uh, but it just kind of adds a little bit of glistening to the snow. And then that's all there is to him. And uh, I'm going to be posting another video probably tomorrow with another Christmas craft. And um, But that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.